Hi, grade two. We're back to story time with Mrs. Clausen. We are reading Ramona and her father, and this is chapter two called Ramona and the Million Dollars. I'll probably just read part of the chapter, so we'll have two sections. So this is part one of chapter two. Ramona wished she had a million dollars so her family would be fun again. There had been so many changes in the Quimby household since Mr. Quimby had lost his job, but the biggest change of all was in Mr. Quimby himself. First of all, Mrs. Quimby found a full-time job working for another doctor, which was good news. However, even a second grader could understand that one paycheck could not stretch as far as two paychecks, especially when there was so much talk about taxes, whatever they were. Mrs. Quimby's new job meant that Mr. Quimby had to be home when Ramona returned from school. Ramona and her father saw a lot of one another. At first, she thought having her father to herself for an hour or two every day would be fun. But when she came home, she found him running the vacuum cleaner, filling out job applications, or sitting on the couch, smoking and staring into space. He could not take her to the park because he had to stay near the telephone. I think this is before they had cell phones, guys. Remember, this is like an older story. Someone might call to offer him a job. So Ramona grew uneasy. Maybe he was too worried to love her anymore. One day, Ramona came home to find her father in the living room drinking warmed over coffee, smoking, and just staring at the TV set. On the screen, a boy, a couple of years younger than Ramona, was singing, Forget your pots, forget your pans, it's not too late to change your plans. Spend a little, eat a lot, big fat burgers, nice and hot, at the nearest Whopper Burger. Ramona watched him open his mouth wide and bite into a fat cheeseburger with lettuce and tomato spilling out of the bun, and thought wistfully of the good old days when the family used to go to the restaurant on payday, and when her mother used to bring home little treats like stuffed olives or cinnamon buns for Sunday breakfast, or a bag of potato chips. That kid must be earning a million dollars. Mr. Quimby snuffed out his cigarette. He's singing that commercial every time I turn on the TV. A boy Ramona's age earning a million dollars? Ramona was very interested. How's he earning a million dollars? She asked. She had often thought of all the things they could do if they had a million dollars, beginning with turning up the thermostat so they wouldn't have to wear sweaters in the house to save money. Mr. Quimby explained, well, they make a movie of him singing the commercial, and every time the movie is shown on television, he gets paid. It all adds up. Well, this was a new idea for Ramona. She thought it over, and she got out her crayons and paper and knelt on a chair at the kitchen table, singing a song about hamburgers wouldn't be hard. She could do it herself. Maybe she could earn a million dollars like that boy so her father could be fun again. And everyone at school would watch her on television and say, there's Ramona Quimby. Oh, she goes to our school. A million dollars would definitely buy a cuckoo clock for every single room in her house. Her father wouldn't even need a job. And the family could go to Disneyland. Forget your pots, forget your pants, Ramona began to sing as she drew a picture of a hamburger and stabbed little yellow dots all across the top of it for a sesame seed bun. The million dollars. The Quimby's could eat in a restaurant every day if they wanted to. After that, Ramona began to watch for children on television commercials. She saw a boy eating bread and margarine when a crowd suddenly appeared on his head with a fanfare of ta-da music. She saw a girl who asked, Mommy, wouldn't it be nice if caramel apples grew on trees? And another girl 
who took a bite of a cereal and said, It's good! <laughs> and giggled. There was a boy who asked at the end of a wiener commercial, Dad, how do you tell a boy hot dog from a girl hot dog? And a girl who tipped her head to one side and said, Pop, 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 as she listened to her cereal. Children crunched potato chips, chomped on pickles, gnawed at fried chicken. Ramona grew particularly fond of the curly-haired little girl saying to her mother at the zoo, Mommy, look! The elephant's legs are all wrinkled up just like your pantyhose. Ramona could say all those things. And boys and girls, have you ever noticed commercials? I know we did when we did media literacy. We looked at a lot of commercials. So think about if you were in a commercial, what kind of commercial would you like to be in? And if you're noticing, if you're watching something on, on TV or on your um, device, notice commercials. Notice the kids in them and wonder, could you do that? Would you want to do that? Ramona began to practice. Maybe someone would see her and offer her a million dollars to make a TV commercial. On her way to school, if her friend Howie did not walk with her, she tipped her head to one side and said, Pop, 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 ha! and giggled to herself. Mmm, it's good, ha! she'd giggle. Giggling wasn't easy when she didn't have anything to giggle about, but she worked on it. Once she practiced on her mother by saying, Mommy, wouldn't it be nice if caramel apples grew on trees? She had taken to calling her mother Mommy lately, because children on commercials always called their mothers Mommy. Mrs. Quimby absent-mindedly answered her and said, Not really. Caramel's bad for your teeth. She was wearing pants, so Ramona could not say that little line about the pantyhose. Since the Quimby's no longer bought potato chips or pickles, Ramona found other foods like toast and apples and carrot sticks to practice good, loud crunching on. When they had chicken for dinner, she smacked her lips. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Ramona, said Mr. Quimby, your table manners grow worse and worse. Don't eat so noisily. My grandmother used to say a smack at the table is worth a smack on the bottom. Ramona, who did not think she would have liked her father's grandmother, was embarrassed. She had been practicing to be on television, and she had forgotten that her family could hear. Ramona continued to practice until she began to feel as if the television camera was watching her wherever she went. She smiled a lot and skipped, feeling like that she was cute and lovable. She felt as if she had fluffy blonde curls, even though in real life her hair was brown and straight. One morning, smiling really prettily, she thought, and swinging her lunchbox, Ramona skipped to school. Today, somebody might notice her because she was wearing her red tights. She was happy because this was a special day, the day of Ramona's parent-teacher conference. Since Mrs. Quimby was at work, Mr. Quimby was going to meet with Mrs. Rogers, her second grade teacher. Ramona was proud to have a father who could come to school. Feeling dainty and curly haired and so adorable, Ramona skipped to her classroom. And what did she see but Mrs. Rogers with wrinkles around her ankles? Ramona did not hesitate. She skipped right over to her teacher, and since there did not happen to be an elephant in room two, she turned the words around and she said, Mrs. Rogers, your pantyhose are wrinkled up just like elephant legs. Hmm? Mrs. Rogers looked surprised. And the boys and girls who had already taken their seats started to giggle. All the teacher said was, uh, thank you, Ramona, for telling me. And remember, we do not skip inside of the building. Ramona had an uneasy feeling that she had displeased her teacher.